All right, here is a 1937 Philco uh, 37-610. Uh, this is the T model for, I guess, tabletop. And uh, this radio was made in several different designs. It was um, made in a tombstone model. I'll show you here in the Philco book. It was... The 37610 was made in the uh, tombstone model. The bullet style tabletop model. And the console uh, model, which is the J. Um, frequency coverage is in three bands from 530 to 1720. That's the AM broadcast band, which is pretty good because I don't think the AM broadcast band went up that high back that back then I think it just went to 16 but the modern broadcast band it pretty much covers all that uh, band 2 is 2.3 to 7.4 megahertz and then from band 3 goes from 7.35 to 22 megahertz and it's got five tubes four controls tuning off on tone band switch and volume control so um yeah uh looks like they made a pretty good bit of these uh this uh this set kind of reminds me of the uh the 37 630 that we did uh, a couple of videos ago um this one's got a little bit more of a rounded edge on it and this one's real similar to that one uh, in the video that uh, entitled Stop Destroying Radio. So uh, that, that might have been a 610. I don't remember right offhand, but um, very similar radio. And uh, this was sent in for repair. So I'm going to kind of dive into this thing and see what's going on with it. All right, and here's the back of the radio. As I said before, a five tube chassis. Um, Looks like we have the same 6A8, 6K7, 6Q7, 5Y4, and 6F6 that we had in our um, other radio we did in the last video, the 3761. So, pretty similar tube lineup, and probably only minor um, circuit differences, being this one has three bands instead of just two. So this thing was pretty crusty, so I had to, it's got droppings, or I had mouse droppings in it, and I had to take it down to the garage and blow it out with an air compressor. So I'm sure we'll find more up under the chassis, but um, just trying to get as much of that crap out as I can so I don't have to breathe that stuff in working on this thing. Also should note this old rubber power cord is about trashed and gone it's got several brakes in it and stuff like that so it's gonna need to be replaced all right now this is a first for me as crusty as this thing is it's got rat droppings and spider webs and all that mess in here and it's been recapped so new filters um yeah it's got orange drops and these uh little yellow caps in here but it must have been, I don't know, it must have been a while back or they stored this thing, you know, somewhere that wasn't, I would say, ideal. But the radio pretty much looks all original on the outside. But, yeah, this thing's recapped. I have to admit, I did plug this thing in. Um, I knew it had been plugged in previous anyway, so... Um, I plugged it in. It seemed to work fine. Um, I was able to pick up uh, 
pretty good on AM. Uh, and shortwave, uh, not quite as good as AM, but it picked up okay. So, may just need to go through and spot check resistors and double check over their work, make sure they did everything correctly on this. I don't know. Uh, this might end up might be an easy one and it might not be uh, <laughs> I hate to say something's easy and uh, usually when I do that I usually end up eating my words so yeah uh, for the most part it's been recapped uh, I don't know what these resistors look like but there's a, a fairly newer one there I don't know if you can see that or not but I got some some newer ones up here so they didn't go completely without checking stuff so yeah it kind of looks like it might have been redone and maybe it's a little bit of an older redo i don't know but um yeah i would say it'd be a good idea to go through and check these resistors and check some voltages and make sure everything's working okay on it Alright, I think I got y'all set up enough where you can see the bolt leader and the, and the, uh, the radio. I'm checking some voltages in these, um, on these tubes here. I'll show you what I'm, what I'm coming up with here. Alright, that's the screen grid voltage on the 6K7. It's about 90, it's supposed to be about 90 volts, it's about 10 volts low. Ain't too big of a deal. That's the plate voltage there on the 6K7. It's supposed to be about 270. We're running about 240. That's a little low. And plate voltage on 6Q7. It's supposed to be about 175. We're running about 140. So that's a little low. Voltages are running. Uh, voltages are running a little bit low on these, on these tubes. About like it was the last one we worked on that 661 at at 3761. This is basically almost the same radio circuitry wise. It's, there's a few differences, but it's pretty close. All right, so. Um, I'm going to replace the cha the chassis washers on this set here. Um, try to set you up as best as I can, give you a, a decent view. But I'm gonna go ahead and re replace these um, washers here. I'm not sure exactly what the procedure is, but we'll uh, we'll try to get it done. Now, when I usually do these, I usually try to um, do them without pulling the whole sub chassis out because uh, obviously that's a whole lot of work and it's a big pain in the butt. So, back one's pretty easy. These are crumbled and they're pretty much history. I mean, you can see. Where the chassis had been sitting down and for years it's pushed this down so it's not exactly center anymore <clears throat> so now with these front ones these are the tricky tricky part and i'm sure a lot of people aren't going to agree with the way i do this but you know it gets the job done what can i say I usually just take and bend this out. It's the easiest way I've found. We'll take and roll this tuning capacitor in so I don't 
mess it up. Let's take it and bend it out. Yeah, she start fooling with these things. They don't, um, they start falling apart, basically. I mean, they're 80 years old, so what can you expect? I think I'm gonna need to get something up under here to hold it. Hold it up. Kind of shove a screwdriver in there and get it and pull it out. gonna end up tearing it up getting it out of there but that's fine we'll get the other one in there it's not a big deal all right that one's gone so basically you just gotta get the new one and pry and tug and pull until you can get it in there It'll eventually go. They're just a little on the stubborn side to get in there. I don't know what you can see. You probably can't see a whole lot. But. All right, and there's uh, the uh, the new one installed there. So got it in without uh, too much of an issue. These. Uh, capacitors here were already removed so it actually made it a lot easier to access it usually you're you know kind of struggling with this cap in the way you can always remove it um it's the best thing to do just you know but i didn't have to remove this but we're going to put some in here that are you know basically out of a junk radio that you know we're just going to put in here for appearances but decided to go ahead and do this first because it makes access a whole lot easier all right, so the other side's on, and it's pretty much the same thing. You've got to bend this back until the point where you, you know, with the back off, you can kind of pull it up and tilt it up. It gives you, like, just barely enough room to kind of squeeze it in there on that peg. And once you get it seated on that peg, you can push it down. And, um... It, it, it'll go back in but you need to check the other side to make sure it hadn't wrinkled up because you know they will do that make sure it hadn't come off or wrinkled up all right so there's one more that often gets overlooked on these and that's this one here it's um basically it isolates this the tuner from the base plate and um that's our replacement so the first thing we need to do to get that out is to remove the dial now this one here has these two holes basically take a pair of needle nose pliers and twist it counterclockwise and it'll pop off 
when you remove that then that'll give you access to that screw and then there's one over here there's one back behind there that you need to take that out so it'll take this the tuner loose on it all right so i had to disconnect this linkage here which is just got a little pin there with two pieces of felt that it just pops out uh, snaps out then on the back of the tuner here you're going to have a little ground strap you're going to have to disconnect that and there is a wire there you can see it sticking up kind of dark but there is a little piece of wire right here you're gonna have to desolder that from from there right where that fresh solder is at right there and once you do that it'll lift up and you can get it loose to get your um, little grommet changed all right and there's our washer installed and all of our stuff is back together all of our dial assembly and little uh, light meter changer deal <laughs> whatever you call it the dial assembly is back together we'll just put it that way all right so another issue we have is these wires here they're they've rubbed through which is pretty common on these old sets rubbed through and they're starting to touch together um so i need to get this taken care of because these are <clears throat> there's high voltage going through these and so i need to to get that taken care of and in order to do that we're gonna have to unsolder them out of the set and pull them out well unsolder them and then untie them because they got it tied back here got it knotted to keep it from pulling back through and um we'll need to repair these wires i'm just gonna probably put some heat shrink over them and um call them good i'll see if i can find a, a grommet to go inside of here a rubber one to keep it from rubbing so much and that should take care of the problem all right so we got the wiring all fixed we got some heat shrink <clears throat> wrapped around the wires there so they won't chafe and i had a a grommet uh but it was a little too small it wouldn't fit in there it would fit in the hole but it, the wires the center hole is too small so i just left it through the factory one there it should be okay i mean i figure it took 80 years to rub through that uh, I think we'll be, probably be good. Well, I must have did something right. Because it's working. That's uh, 1580 WPJK. Alright, so we got this, uh, this 490K resistor replaced here. It was right in here. And... Um, that was way out of tolerance. I think 800k. All right. So here's the here's that resistor I was just talking about. It's a 490k ohm resistor, and it's reading 841k. So yeah. That one's way out of tolerance. We got that one replaced. And what I want to show you here is some sloppy work. And this is the kind of stuff I always try to correct when customers send in radios that have been worked on before, which is almost always because these radios are so old that, you know, somebody, some wares worked on them before and it's usually sloppy and this is no exception this right here is a is a j hook which is fine if you can't do anything else but i mean not even much of that j hook is connected there so 
We're gonna need to clean up that connection. I don't like it. That looks like it'd come loose. And there we go. That took like two minutes to correct that. So when you're recapping these radios, you know, take the extra time to to do it right and it'll last you. Alright, the next thing I don't like on this set is this crap here. This is some 1.2 kilovolt capacitor is probably somebody got out of the TV in the high voltage section or something. I don't, I don't know, but these are basically tacked on top of here and done the lazy way, like what I like to call the lazy way. Nobody wants to take this Bakelite block out and disconnect the existing capacitors. They just tack them in over the top of the old ones and, you know, um, that's, I guess, supposed to be good enough or something like that. But the problem is you don't disconnect the old capacitor. Uh, I'm remind you, it's just an across the line cap. But uh, you, you don't take the old caps out. So, you, you know, if the existing capacitor is still in there, it's still got some capacitance. And you don't have the right value and you have an old capacitor in the circuit that could short and cause a problem with the power transformer since this is hooked up on the power line so we need to get these out of here and uh, rebuild this bake light block now I've showed this a hundred times on my videos you just take this screw out there's a special tool that you can insert in here and push the old uh, ball of tar out of here and you basically you just put in your new caps which is, is what I'm going to use these 0 .015 caps and uh, 153 is going to be the marking on a 153k that indicates it's a 0 .015 capacitor which is what these are that somebody tacked in here that took the lazy way out and dis didn't disconnect the original ones alright so uh this video has taken so long to, to do because we've been waiting on parts to come in and you know because of the uh, virus situation we uh, are getting held up on a lot of parts from uh, you know USPS and so anyway uh, I got a tube shield for it I had one out of this one out of another junk radio this one was sent to me by the owner and then uh, so we got a power cord replacement for uh, from the owner and I'm gonna put that in and the plug the original plug that's on this radio uh, the actual plug the part that plugs in the wall is detachable from the cord itself so we're gonna reuse that keep it original put that cord in and um, so when I switch the cord out, what I want to do is go ahead and rebuild that Bakelite block capacitor that um, the cord attaches to. We'll do all that at the same time. Also, we got uh, our 9K resistor in. Uh, they had daisy chained in some kind of, of a replacement. And uh, I wanted to get that replaced. I got this going on here. So we're going to go ahead and get that replaced with a single resistor instead of doing that. Alright, so that 9K resistor was a success. So now we need to get into fixing up all this, the power cord and this stuff here. Alright, so the first order of business I'm going to do is get rid of this ratty power cord that's crumbling. And so I've got that disconnected. The leads go here and here. And then the second order of business is to get rid of this crap here. This, you know, as I explained earlier, they just tacked these on and didn't do anything in the side and left the old cap in, in, in series and in the circuit. So we're going to get rid of all that. Alright, so I don't know if this was a replacement end or what, but how this thing works is you squeeze in, squeeze in on the prongs and that part comes off. 
and your power cord it, you know to get that out you're going to spread them apart and your power cord is going to pull out of there and there's still some of that casing stuck down in there I'll have to dig that out with a pick but once I do that we should be able to to get our replacement cord here and slide it in there and, and push that down and it should probably pierce it or something like that but you gotta make sure you put that over your cord first and just slip it back together all right so again i've shown this on other videos but normally how i do this is we take the screw out and pull it back as much as i you know so i can get to the underside of it our uh star washer stayed in place there so hopefully it'll stay there and i can put it back in without having to drop it and lose it and all that so what i do is i try to make a hole in the center there and take my little trusty tool here i heat this up around here and push that in and pop the the uh tar out of the back of it there all right and there's our new replacements all right so that was a success got rid of those big honking capacitors there and you know, restuffed the block and got our new uh, power cord on got it knotted up for strain relief there should be good to go all right i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to go ahead and get this wrapped up uh I uh, finally had the uh, last tube that came in the mail today. It's a new old stock uh, 5Y4. And uh, so we'll need to get that swapped out. I used one of the spare one I had. That's my tube, but the set, the rectifier tube was weak in it. And I, tested it off camera come up with these three tubes that were bad all the other ones passed an emissions test so this is a 6a8 here it was weak and the 6f6 which is the audio output tube it's already that one already came in the other day and we got that one replaced it tests good and the 5y4 which is the uh, rectifier tube was on the weak side so we got us a new old stock uh, 5y4 rectifier tube all right here's our new 5y4 tube it checks about 760 or so and then you go this way with it here it's three that's the other section of it there and it's almost 700 so good tube all together all right and just because i've already got this thing set i'm not going to do it again but uh i popped in our old tube here and that's uh i guess diode two and that's diode one so yeah it was a little on the weak side that's the the old tube all right we're about ready to wrap this one up so let's recap on what we did i replaced a 470k ohm resistor that would went way up in value replaced uh the uh, uh rebuilt the two the bakelite block capacitor which is cross the line cap 2.015 630 volt caps cleaned up and repaired the wiring to the speaker back here apparently didn't make good use of it because it was shorting against the chassis um we replaced the power cord with a uh, one the owner sent in pretty close to the original it's a brown cord a little bit thicker than the original but we got it to work and um we um installed the chassis washers here and these uh, all three on the sub tuner board that one in the back too um we installed some uh original can capacitors out of a junk radio that was sent in for parts 
here and then these two here for appearances sakes um, we uh, tested the tubes and found a bad 6F6 6Q8 and a, a 5Y4 tube those were replaced and then I replaced the uh, 9K power resistor that feeds the power to the screen grid voltages uh, on the uh, IF tubes and replaced that because they had a daisy chain resistor in there which read about the right value but I just wanted to get that replaced with a a regular resistor so that's all I can think of right now that we've done to this thing it played when we got it and uh, it plays a little bit better now I did do an alignment off camera and got it lined back up and picks up good on AM shortwave now it's during the daytime so we're not going to pick up a bunch of DX HD online at therockfms.com on your phone with the iHeartRadio app and on hundreds That's of 970 devices, there. Alexa, Google Home, Xbox, and Sonos, an iHeartRadio station. Country station, not sure where that's coming in at. Local twelve forty. Solomon in regards to his wealth and his wealth. Thirteen forty about a mile up the road. WPJK should be up here. If that's WPJK or not, it's way off in the background. Yeah, there it is. That's WPJK. Supposed to be a Christian format, but they play a actually play a hodgepodge of different kind of music. Sometimes they'll play old stuff, and sometimes they play a little bit newer stuff. There's 1590 WCAM Classic Country. Had a lot of stations flip flop on the format. This used to be more of a classic music jazz station and now they've moved over to country I don't want to leave it there too long I don't want to get a copyright this is up on the old police band so this thing pretty much gets the entire AM broadcast band see if we can get anything on a short wave on the lower bands during the daytime. Let's go up to the higher band. That's picking up. Let me go ahead and put this thing back in the cabin. It's just easier to operate that way. Dot net. That's WRMI dot net. Visit our website and share your QSL reports. This is WRMI. God says, what are you going to do in the end? Uh, WRMI, they're playing this preacher. You hear them on almost every frequency.
Got it all back in the cabinet, as you see. It's so dark. And there he is again. They don't want to retain. There he is again. I mean, he's all over the place. About the only thing you can pick up during the daytime. That in Spanish. They don't want to retake. Yep, there he is again. <laughs> yeah, there's some Spanish. About the art behind bars. They just get another 24 hours to plan their destruction of humanity. They just get another 24 hours. Number station. Does work well on short wave. Anybody notice that uh, about the middle of June, the Federal Reserve talked about it on the show in the morning, but about the middle of June, the Federal Reserve said, oh, we got a some FT8 on the amateur band so this dials off a little bit She comes in when I put my hand in. Okay, okay. Worldwide. A pretty good sound to it too. The speaker sounds really good. It's got that hung up spot right in there. It's right around 1300. Yeah, that's that's about it. But uh, you will see it. I will see. Yeah, it works good. There's a 1937 Philco model 37610 working up on full, working full speed again. So uh, appreciate y'all watching and uh, look out for more videos. I got uh, two more to work on. So hopefully uh, you know all the uh, part shipping delays don't delay the video too long. But that's all that's really delaying the videos right now is the uh, the parts trickling in. So. Uh, with all the parts finally in for this one, we can wrap this one up. Thank you for watching.